Welcome to the Certification Board for Diabetes Care and Education's presentation, Becoming a Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist, the short and sweet of it. My name is Cheryl Traficano and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the organization. Welcome to today's presentation. Just a few disclaimers to start. This presentation is an overview of both the organization and the certification program. You'll want to be sure to refer to the current examination handbook or our website for any clarifications on eligibility requirements or the examination application and administration process. The organization and certification program have undergone name changes in 2020. The organization was known as the National Certification Board for Diabetes Educators and the certification was known as the Certified Diabetes Educator or CDE credential. We're now known as the Certification Board for Diabetes Care and Education, and the certification is called Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist or CDCES. Our organization is a private, not-for-profit certifying body, different than a number of different membership organizations you may know about, such as the Association of Diabetes Care and Education Specialists, or if you're, say, a registered nurse, the American Nurses Association. Our organization's sole purpose is to administer the certification program. This slide shows the continuing increase in the prevalence of diabetes and shows the need for more health professionals specializing in diabetes. Diabetes Self-Management Education and Support, also known as DSMES or Diabetes Education, is a component of standard diabetes care and referrals for diabetes education are recommended for quality diabetes care. Updated annually, the American Diabetes Association Standards of Medical Care and Diabetes provides clinicians and others with the components of diabetes care, general treatment goals, and tools to evaluate the quality of care. The introduction to the 2020 standards of care begins. Diabetes is a complex chronic illness requiring continuous medical care with multifactorial risk reduction strategies beyond glycemic control. Ongoing patient self-management education and support are critical to preventing acute complications and reducing the risk of long-term complications. In addition, a number of national health organizations collaborated and developed a position statement to define when diabetes education should be provided for type 2 diabetes and what is included at each of the time points for quality diabetes care. Many of the recommendations are appropriate for other types of diabetes. The joint position statement recently updated in 2020 notes the four critical times as at diagnosis, during the annual assessment, when new complicating factors occur, and when transitions occur. A CDCES serves as the mentor, confidant, cheerleader, and coach for the person living with diabetes. They are valued and respected members of the healthcare team and make a difference in the lives of people with diabetes and their communities. Why do individuals choose to become certified? It demonstrates consumers that they hold knowledge needed for quality care and education. It helps peers and providers recognize their roles and ability to contribute as a member of the healthcare team. It distinguishes them in a competitive market and often expands their personal and professional opportunities. Individuals who are certified are confident and fulfilled. 95% believe the certification enhances their credibility. 97% said certification provides personal and professional growth and accomplishment, and 92% said certification enhances their confidence. The certification is a multidisciplinary certification and many different health professions, uh, professionals license and registrations can qualify. Currently with just under 20,000 active certificates, we have 48% who are registered nurses, 42% who are registered dietitian nutritionists, 7% who are pharmacists, and a number of other qualifying licenses and registrations make up the balance of the 3%. The eligibility requirements for the certification are similar to many other healthcare specialties. Individuals need to obtain uh, the professional qualifying professional license or registration they need to accrue practice experience, uh, continuing education, and then apply for the examination. For our certification program, the individual needs two years of general practice experience, 1,000 hours within four years providing diabetes education to people with diabetes, 
with at least 400 of those hours in the last 12 months. And they need 15 hours of continuing education related to diabetes within the past two years. For the practice experience requirement, both the two years and the thousand hours can be accrued at the same time, but that is not a requirement. And individuals often do the continuing education and the practice experience at the same time also. Once individuals can document meeting all of the eligibility requirements, they take the next step, apply for the examination, and move forward from there. The certification is a mastery level certification, and that relates to the need to accrue practice experience in order to obtain or master the knowledge and application of the knowledge associated with the specialty. In the field, individuals obtain knowledge about diabetes and diabetes education, how to apply that knowledge in real life situations, and learn to analyze a complex scenario to arrive at the best answer or approach. Accrual of sufficient practice experience allows people to master that knowledge about diabetes and serve their patients well to achieve positive outcomes. Let's take a look at several different scenarios as far as whether people have met the eligibility requirements or not. Our first example is Jasmine, who's a registered nurse. Jasmine became licensed as a registered nurse on February 5th, 2017. She's interested in applying as of March 15th, 2020. She meets the discipline requirement. She then needs to look at the practice experience requirements. For the two years, Jasmine started her first job as a staff nurse on March 1st, 2017. So she did meet the two-year requirement on March 1st, 2019. She began a job that included providing diabetes education to people with diabetes on April 1st. She's been tracking her hours and her experience started May 1st, 2018 after orientation. She actually had a thousand hours on January 1st of 2020. And by March 15th of 2020, when she was interested in applying, she actually had 1200 hours. And with that, she's had her most recent 400 hours started April 1st of 2019. Therefore, when we look at the 1,000-hour diabetes requirement, she meets each of those. 1,000 hours was met on January 1st. None of the hours are older than March 15th of 2016, four years from the application date. And she had 400 hours since March 15th of 2019 in the most recent 12 months. As far as her continuing education, she earned hours of CE between April 1st of 2018 and April 30th of 2019. She actually had the 15 hours and none were older than March 15th, 2018, which is two years from when she planned to apply. So Jasmine meets all of the eligibility requirements. In our second example, we look at Delilah, who's a pharmacist. And Delilah was also interested in applying on March 15th, 2020. She became licensed as a pharmacist on February 5th of 2018, so she meets the discipline requirement. She started her first job as a clinical pharmacist on April 1st of 2018. So when we look at the two year practice requirement as of March 15th, 2020, she would not meet that two year requirement and would need to wait on that one until at least April 1st of 2020. She began a job that included providing diabetes education on May 1st. She had a thousand hours by March 15th of 2020, but had less than the 400 needed within the last 12 months. Therefore, she only met one aspect, the 1,000 hours, but not the 400 hours needed within the most recent 12 months. She did meet the continuing education requirement. She had 15 hours as of April 30th, 2019, and none of those were older than two years from the date she planned to apply for the application. But unfortunately, because she did not have the two years or the 400 hours, she would need to wait until she meets all of the eligibility requirements. Once you're ready to apply for the examination and you want to begin preparing for the exam, you'll want to take a look at our website and at the examination handbook where there are many, where there is many resources and information about studying and preparing for the examination. We do feel it's important to mention there are a lot of organizations and companies that offer courses or classes to prepare for the exam. However, none of those are affiliated with our organization and cannot guarantee you passing the examination. The organization does not have an official course or class to prepare you for the exam. Instead, again, you'll want to go to the website and the handbook and take a look at different things, including the examination content outline, the available references, and other information about studying and preparing for the examination. 
You can reach us at our website, cbdce.org, email info at cbdce.org. Our phone is 847-228-9795. We do have a dedicated team that will answer all of your questions and support you in your efforts to becoming certified. So please reach out to us if you have any questions. And last, we'll leave you with just several testimonials from our cur currently certified individuals about why they became certified. From Rebecca Morrison, she says, it is crucial to have a CDCES as a team member in the hospital, as well as outpatient setting. Not only does the CDCES educate, they also encourage and collaborate on how to manage and improve care. CDCESs are a vital part of the diabetes management team and have the time to spend with patients that physicians do not always have to help achieve the best outcomes. Julia Stating says, every CDCES that I have met at local and national meetings are so excited to share their ideas. It is like one big family who really cares about treating people with diabetes and helping each other to do better in our careers. How can someone not be excited to join such a group? And lastly, Deborah D'Angelo says, the most rewarding part of being a CDCES is helping people with diabetes overcome barriers and improve their health. My decision to become certified was the best career move I have taken as a registered dietitian. Thank you for listening today and please do reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you.